What the hell is it? So in a world where hell has literally emerged itself on Earth, four individuals, two of them are well trained, especially when it comes to combat and guns, the others are not. They will try their best to survive for as long as they can inside of the heart of a mall while trying to keep out the literal living dead. So we're talking about Dawn of the Dead. Now this movie is directed by George A. Romero and stars David M. Ken Forey, Scott H. Reiner, and Gaylene Ross. I really hope I said that first name correctly. Now seeing as we've given you, we've already given you a, a basic rundown of the plot, the gist of it is this is this is a survival movie. This is how long can you last before the people that are outside or the things that are outside make their way on the inside. And so they have to armor themselves, they have to feed themselves, they have to clothe themselves, and of course they have to find some ways to entertain themselves as well to just keep them from going crazy. Why? Because the living dead is on the inside is on the outside of the mall. This whole movie, I would say about 80% of it takes place in one setting. So if we were to provide you with an overall uh, rundown of what it is transpires in this movie, it doesn't start off in the way that um, I had mentioned earlier, which is in the mall. That's the main setting of where this is all gonna take place. Now, it actually starts off in a newsroom where they're discussing all of what's transpiring with a guy by the name of, I think his name is Dr. Foster, something along those lines. And he's telling them, all of what's going on on the outside and how it is that you need to get rid of these creatures, um, what they're doing, why they're a danger, and why they need to be taken serious. Every dead body that is not exterminated becomes one of them. It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. And so naturally, he's getting some pushback. The reason why he's getting some pushback is because not in, not in this day and age. If you were to tell somebody, you know, there's a, there's a, a zombie apocalypse outside, they would believe you a lot more than uh, there'd be any skepticism. Why? Because you know it's a little fantasy of some people. But uh, he's getting some some pushback from the news anchors because how are you supposed to convince individuals that the people that are walking around still, the people that look like our relatives, siblings, loved ones, how do you convince them? that they're actually dead. That's a crazy thought. They're walking around, but they need to be executed because they're dead. Is because this is exactly what that uh, the doctor does. He's, he's telling you all of what you need to know early on in this movie to kind of get it out of the way, right? So there's, there's no real need to establish anything beforehand. I mean, we all could have put two and two together way beforehand because we, we know what George A. Romero uh, brings to the table. Um, they get a few things out of the way, actually. Namely, the, the problem outside. Um, what it is, is transpiring. There's, they show some graphic details of these creatures looking to not just bite, but devour into people. And what happens when they bite into you. They show you how the regular world is handling it. They show you what the army's even doing about all of this. They show you how people are handling this, whether they, whether they're, you know, people that are still looking to go home or whether they're people that are still looking to engage with their family, do their jobs. As you could see with this news reporter, he's still at work, with two and two together, right? But it's not just them now. People are hunting these creatures. They're using them for hunting practice. And of course, somewhere along the lines is where we run into our our co-stars for this movie. And one scene that actually took me aback was there's there's a few different people that are in some different categories. There's a pilot, there's the damsel in distress, and then of course you have the two soldiers or mercenaries or whatever. The pilot, I don't know what he was trying to prove, but he takes aim at a, at, a, at a zombie that's walking up on one of the one of the mercenaries or one of the soldiers and he's about to fire and i guess the, the soldier realizes what's about to happen and probably knew that this guy has some really bad aim and you know this happens yeah if i was him i would have gotten out the way as well and probably would have taken aim at him right after I know he can't fire back because it already looks like he can't aim. This is why my friend had to step in. 
and this is the place that we're actually going to be taking up the rest of this movie we go from the sky all the way down to the mall now first things first before they can really get comfortable and you know um secure themselves within this mall they gotta do a few things clear them all out the crazy thing is whenever you have a group this is why it's so it's so crazy whenever you have a group as much as you're trying to do good and you already saw the two soldiers if you've seen this movie you've seen the two soldiers go into that same boiler room and they're trying to clear things out and they did a fine job but there's always one person that does some nonsense and goes out on their own and then does this nobody told him go out on his own stay where you are let them do their job the thing is with this movie it carries on with the same premise for quite some time until they actually clear them all out but in them so doing so somebody of course in the crew naturally gets hurt this actually took a little bit of a different stance than the movies that we have in modern day time and in our regular um zombie apocalypses apocalypse apocalypses whatever normally when someone gets bitten they transform within what a couple minutes hours i would venture to say that he was probably laying down on that bed for maybe a day or two before he actually changed before he changed this is what presses them to now begin getting equipped I guess that would be the advantage of staying in a place like a, like a big old mall with a pile of guns. Almost unlimited resources, unlimited ammunition. It should be fine. Or so you would think. And of course, what you realize is that in every universe, monster universe, zombie universe, things where, things where you know, the undead exist, everyone has their own rules. Whether the zombies are, are fast, uh, whether the zombies are strong, whether they are mindful, they're mindless, um, they can feel, they can't feel. In this case, this movie also establishes rules. They need to feed and they need to be popped in the head if, in order for them to die, which is pretty standard. That's a pretty standard one. But one that I didn't actually realize was zombies can feel in their hands. These creatures can actually feel. He takes a blowtorch to him and then runs it over the zombie's fingers and he pulls his hand back now in most universes where zombies exist if you run a blowtorch over them they could be caught on fire they're still coming until you hit them in the head they're still coming so the team finally has a chance to relax and in their midst of them having a chance to relax they decide to well do what anyone else would do enjoy them all go shopping go buy some stuff go pick up some things go buy some fur coats which is what you'll see them do all right uh they decide to just overall have some fun and they break out individually and just enjoy a night out on the town and with that night out on the town it comes a few different things um you might not have you might not have time for everything you might not have time to to really savor the moment and you might not really have time to ever fully enjoy yourself but one thing that we've always learned in horror movies there's always time for romance as i said somehow people make time for romance now how many y'all can tell me after after looking at this tell me that she doesn't actually look like a zombie herself And this is one of the reasons why you also can't get too comfortable because no matter if um no matter how much of a fortress you set up there will always as long as there are still people there will always be someone else there that is looking to infiltrate within your bases to get rid of what it is that you have and in this case you run into <laughs> the stereotype of the decade but first you had zombies from hell and then you have the motorcycle gang from hell 
they begin to cause some trouble, run some mischief, and <laughs> just, just, uh, just wasting time. Whatever their objective was, it, it ultimately led to more harm than good because once once the first team cleared out the mall, now the zombies are right back in the mall. So the place is no longer safe. There's not enough manpower. They, they don't have enough firepower. So they need to really strategize as to what they're going to do. So they need to get out of there, basically. And anytime someone needs to escape, you already know what's coming up. Sacrificial lamb. Get out of here. So I'm not kidding you. I'm actually not kidding you with this. In in one scene, he's telling her, "Go on, get out of here. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to. I want to just go about my business. I want to. I want to be gone." And within the very next scene, he wants to live. Yeah, I think that brother had an epiphany. He realized what was about to happen to him and probably probably realized that this is not going to be this is not going to be fast if anything with you this is going to be slow slow and dragged out this is going to be a while and they're going to enjoy this one so do you really want to experience that especially now that you decided not to put the thing to your head so he fights his way through makes it through all the zombies gets up the ladder and I'm fairly convinced there is no one no one no one no one that can actually convince me that he didn't change his mind he did not actually have a change of heart he decided not to just be the sacrificial lamb but he wants to live now simply for the purpose of doing this <laughs> this, guy, this guy did a double kick <laughs> okay okay are you showing off his skills now so overall um my opinion on dawn of the dead this is this is an absolute classic the reason why it's one it falls within um my my category of being one of my favorites is because of how early of an impact this had especially within the the 70s to early 80s uh, George A. Romero's, I, I absolutely loved his movie, Night of, Night of the Living Dead. It followed a very similar premise of people being stuck inside of a of a temporary sanctuary to where they're infiltrated. And basically, there's no escape for them left, right, and center, right? Um, so they have to just find a way to, to survive. I think George does, George does remarkable work and the reason i didn't put night of, the, night of the living dead on here is because i think that's in a different category all all on its all by itself um i think that had something else to say versus what this movie was was going for the the genre of actual horror um graphic yes very graphic now it's not as graphic as it would be today um namely because of the the availability of different resources such as you know blood packs and paint and whatnot right but in this case though for what it is i think this movie is very special highly rewatchable and if you have not watched this movie yet please go watch it they they did remake this movie in 2004 but i think this is the one that actually stands up to time if i were to give this movie a ranking just based on impact influence the social and those the um social status um, what this movie was saying and at, at its time, the overall writing of this movie, everything encompassed, I think I would give this movie quite possibly a 7.5. And the reason I'm not going higher is because you do see little glitches here and there. I mean, it, it was the 70s, for goodness sake. So a lot of the prosthetics was easy to make out. But I think, that it, I think they did an absolutely fantastic job. And I will give this a 7.5 and end it there. It's unfortunate that it didn't have a lot of uh, scary aspects to it. This is this is one of those movies that doesn't really play on that. It plays on more of the graphic design, graphic nature of the of the film, and plays on the actual storytelling of people trapped in in a place and trying to survive. 
brilliant job absolutely brilliant job still holds out for today that's all i got for now i'll see you guys later